Hello YouTube, RJ. Well today, we're going to be talking about fox hunting. No, not that kind of fox hunting. This kind of fox hunting. The kind of fox hunting where amateur radio operators go out with antennas and handhelds and radios and search for transmitters that are hidden. I recently joined the local ham club and they're preparing to do a fox hunt. Talking to them sounded very interesting, like a lot of fun, so I decided I wanted to do it, but I had no equipment. So as you know, in the recent video that I posted, we created a offset attenuator for fox hunting. Well, now we need an antenna and we need a Yagi antenna of some kind. I thought about going with the tape measure Yagi that is very, very popular for this. Basically, you take some PVC and put it together and take an old cheap tape measure and you cut off the right lengths. Hose clamp them down and hook an antenna cable to them and very, very cheap, very, very easy to make. One of the benefits is it's flexible. You can fold it up. If you're going through the woods, you don't have to worry about solid elements being a problem. These will flex around. There's a couple things that are negatives to these. One is wind can be an issue. I've seen some videos of fox hunts where the participants that were using these were having a lot of trouble. Every time they try to turn around to aim and find a bearing, the wind was blowing hard enough that these things wanted to fold up on them and cause them problems. So that's one issue. Unless it's a windy day, you're, you're in good shape. They seem to work pretty good for people. So what do I really want? I've got a couple of wants with an antenna. You know, I want something nice. I wanted something that would fit into the back of my car assembled so I could just take it out, take a bearing, get it, put it in the back of the car. I had a hatchback and, and go on. Based on that, I had a couple of limitations. I was thinking more of going something down this line, something like an Arrow 2. It's uh, made with aluminum Arrow shafts, but if you look at the longest element, they're uh, 20 and a quarter times two, so four, over 40 inches, which is, you know, over a meter, it's too much to fit across flat laying in the back of my car. So that would be a, a travel problem. I'd have to take it apart. I thought about it a little bit and I decided, you know, I like to build my own stuff anyway. Let's design and build our own antenna. After deciding that, that's what I was going to do. So what I'm going to take you through now is kind of the process I went through of designing a Yagi antenna to meet my need and how I built the antenna so you can see how to build one yourself. I used the program Yagi CAD. I spent a few hours in Yagi CAD playing around to design the antenna that I wanted. And so I'm going to walk you through one of the first things I did. I wanted to see, you know, from a design point of view, how the tape measure Yagi did. So one of the things I did is I went in and I created a designed based on the tape measure Yagi, all of the spacing and element links and such that you can find online. And this is what I came up with. And this is Yagi CAD. It's a free software to download. Uh, it's called Yagi CAD 6 version 6.1. It gives you an interface specifically for Yagi's and simplifies it for you. So basically what we're looking at here is we've got a reflector, a, dr a driven element, and a director. So you've got your three elements of your tape measure antenna. And then starting at the reflector, it's zero, its position is zero. This is all in meters. So this is how many meters from the reflector to the driven. Then how many, how, and then how many from the reflector to the dri uh, uh, director. So you have your reflector is your position zero. Your driven is at 0 0.2032 meters and your directors at 0 0.5207 meters. So that's the length of the boom of the antenna and what position these elements lay on. And then this column, you put in the length in meters of how long the, the actual element is. And then from this, you know, we've got it set up as a dipole. The default is 31 segments. That's for the mathematical calculations. We consider it lossless. And then, of course, we need to set the frequency we're looking at, and we have to go in and set what kind of match are we going to use. Well, in the case of the tape measure, we use a direct connection to the elements. We don't use any kind of match. Some people put hairpins on them, but we're looking at the, the typical fox hunting antenna that uses a direct connection. So we have that set. You have to go in and set the boom. In the case of the tape measure Yagi, the boom is zero. And the reason is there's no conductivity of that PVC. So we can consider it to not be an effect. Based on that, what we can do is do basic calculations. And we see we come up with a gain of 6.02 dBi, a front to back ratio of 11.19 dB. And we can go in and say, okay, let's look at what the pattern would look like. 
I'll drag this out where it's a little easier to see. So here's the pattern. You can, you can see down here we have a, at 145 megahertz, we've got 3 dB bean widths of 70.5 degrees. So drop back 3 dB and what you have is a 70 and a half degree sweep. You can see the the back end of the antenna, the front to back ratio is, is this is full, full reception. You can see the drop in the front to back. You can see the horizontal pattern. So it looks to have a maximum gain of 6.02 at zero degrees. So this is what we end up with, with tape measure Yagi. So based on this, I decided to go and design an antenna for myself. Here's what I did. I went and designed my own antenna. So let's go ahead and open that up. Here's what I ended up with. One of the uh, caveats of what I needed was I needed something that had the longest element being under a meter or not more than a meter, uh, which that allows it to sit flat in the back of my hatchback. So I've met that goal with this design. I wanted something for elements. Uh, I wanted something that I could take apart in the middle very easily to make it shorter when I needed to, very quickly, very easily. Uh, something with decent gain, something with decent front to back. And so this is what I end up with. The boom, I went with aluminum. I figured out my equivalent diameter for a square stock of aluminum. So the match, also a direct connection. I didn't want to have to deal with any gamma matches or anything. With that, the gain is 9.61 dBi, 10.94. So if we compare these two antennas, right off the bat, you can see that I've got, oh, more than 3 dB, about 3 point, almost 3.6 dB additional gain out of this antenna, um, which is nice, but where it really is going to come in is if we go and look at the pattern. My pattern for 3 dB drops to 57, from 70 and a half to 57. So as you probably can make out from this chart, the beam width is much narrower. It's more of a, going to pinpoint your, your RF source much easier, much closer. Still got a really good, not quite, doesn't look like it has quite as good a front to back, but it's very close, 10.94 to 11.19, you wouldn't even notice that. So that's about equivalent. Uh, it has a really good knolls on the side. That helps also. This is the pattern. But let's go back to the tape measure Yagi and let's say, okay, let's look overall, which will show us from 144 to 148, what we can expect the match and such for this antenna to be. This, let me see if I can drag that out, make it a little larger. Here's your effective gain. It's a, a little under five at the bottom of 144, and it climbs to five and a half, maybe. Yeah, five and a half at 148. You can see the SWR is above three at 144, starts dropping down. As you get in the 150, 45 range, you know, you're under three, drops on down. If you wanted to transmit on this for sure, you would want to have some kind of match. You'd want to put a hairpin on it or something to get this SWR down. Well, I didn't want that. I wanted this to be a direct connect that had a really flat SWR. With that in mind, let's go do the same thing with the antenna I designed. Okay. I think you can see that your effective gain is much higher on this antenna. And your SWR, I mean, the highest you get to is one and a half up at 148. Most of the band, it's up to about 146. You're barely off of one. Got a really flat response here. That shows for really effective gain. You know, this program typically does a really good job. If you, if you match up your design to exactly what you've put in, it usually reflects pretty closely. So I think you can see that Obviously, with an extra element, we get a benefit, but beyond that, the matching of the SWR and such is really good with this. So from that, once I spent a few hours coming up with an antenna design, what I did, just in case, I forgot to save it. 
What I did at that point was I jumped over in the CAD program and based on that, I actually CAD designed out an entire. Let me jump over and pull the CAD up and I'll show you what that looks like. Here's what that design looks like. I've converted to inches. This is the design and right here, what looks like a couple of little squares in, in here. What this is, is this is a actual connection and I'm gonna show you what that is but I 3D printed this, and what it is is these smaller steps here fit inside of the aluminum tubing. This is the same size as aluminum tubing in here. These are little holes that then get drilled out, and, and I'll show you how where those come in in a moment. But let me open up and show you some of these parts. This is what you were looking at. What it is, it's a coupler. The little holes are put there to give me precise alignment for drilling. This, your aluminum tubing literally slides onto this up against this edge. One side gets bolted and one side gets a small, I call them tractor pin, ball release pin. And so this is what puts that antenna together in the middle. So you literally can open up the antenna and I'm going to show you the antenna in a minute. You'll be able to see this, but this is a 3D printed part that I just printed. That goes, that, I call that the driven element coupling because this is where your driven element is connected to isolate it electrically. So then of course we need a grip to hold on to. And this is what I came up with. It's a 3D printed pistol grip, this square fits into the aluminum, inside of the aluminum, and of course you drill and put a, a bolt through and tighten it up, and that fits this piece onto the antenna for you to hold. And then we have another part that mounts to this, and this is that part. It's a funny looking little clip and it mounts to the top of the pistol grip and screws to it here. And what it does, it allows you to take your HD handheld radio and use the actual belt clip to drop over. The belt clip slides down and locks in this hole here and holds your radio. And these little sides, sides sticking up here prevent it from sliding around. And so you clip it on and it becomes a holder for your radio so that you don't have to hold the radio with your hands. It's right there in the right place to watch the S meter. I designed this to fit both my Yaesu FT70D and I've got a Baofame GT5R. I think the UV5R, same thing, will fit onto it. Locks on, so both of it's interchangeable. You can use either radio on it. I'm going to bell off the computer now, go over and set up the cameras, and we'll fire them up, and we'll come back and show you what we did to make this antenna. Okay, we're back, and here we have the completed antenna on the bench. Two aluminum pieces. Um, notice the holes. I've drilled holes through, through it for lightning, and you'd be surprised. That took uh, over 25% of the weight out of the booms, which I've got the thinnest wall booms I could find. Fairly light. We're talking ounces, not pounds. So what you have is the construction is very, very simple. Nothing complicated here. The holes are drilled in the proper spacings for your elements. Here's your elements. They're arrows, anodized arrows. Little plastic caps I got from Amazon to cover the ends. Nice soft. Keep them poking people. Of course, they're threaded with 832, which is standard for arrows. In here, so what we have here is we've got 832 threaded rod that we've cut. It goes completely through. These three goes completely through, and when your elements screw on, that makes them electrically connected. It's also electrically connected to the boom, just as we expected in our design. Down here on this end is a little different. This is that printed 3D printed plastic piece. And these are literally melted into the plastic, but not halfway. They don't touch. They come in less than halfway. Double netted here, hooked to my coax. Six turns of coax. Comes out and connects to our offset attenuator that we worked on in the last videos. Uh, the only difference there is I used my wife's Creed Cut 
to make some labeling to label the power switch and the attenuator knob so we know which way is which and what's on what's off. Pistol grip that we 3D printed. I'll just quickly show you a time lapse of that being printed. Okay, here's our radio holder that we talked about. Here's my Yezu. So if I can do this one handed, open the clip, put it in there, locks it in, and it's solid. There you go. Now you've got your radio, you don't have to handle your radio. So that's how that works. That works very well. Here's your what I was calling tractor pin. Let me set it down where you can see it. It's got a little spring loaded ball goes in through here and connects these together. So I want to assemble this and I'm going to switch over where you can see on this camera. It's as simple as taking and plugging these two shafts together like that. Put your pin in and literally you can assemble this, this uh, antenna that quickly. You're done. That, that's how quick you can put it together. So it makes it convenient when you need to put it in the car and pull your pin, pull it apart. You're done. Piece of cake. So your elements are threaded. So this is element. Well, let's go with the correct element. Here's element four. Okay, this would be our reflector. Simply goes on. Spinner on. Spinner up tight. You're done. That's it. It's solid. It won't come off. You can leave them all and take it apart, put it in the car, leave it together, put it in the car. And, and the nice thing is, because we met my requirement of length of your longest, here I can set this all complete in my car, hatchback of my car, take it right out, no problem. Very simple construction. Um, you can see examples of similar antennas on YouTube. It's not like it's radically, something radically new, but this one's designed for my needs. So that's for the an antenna. Next question is, how did we do? We met our requirements for length of element. Did the performance come out where we wanted it to come out? Well, let's jump over to the computer. We'll show you how it performed on the Nano VNA. Um, I can tell you I was very happy. Okay, here's our results. See from the graph, we're just below 1.2 at 144, and we are about 1.384, just below 1.4 at 148. And the area we were targeting around 145, you can see we're right down there. We're like 1.117. It pretty well puts us in the ballpark of what Yagi Cad said. Not exactly, but darn close. Very usable across the band for not only receiving, but transmitting. Very happy with the outcome of this. Thank you for being with me for this video. I know it was a little bit of a long one. We tried to cram a lot in on this antenna build. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. We're going to move forward with the Fox Hunt series with the next video, which will be converting a $25 Baofeng handheld into a fox hunting transmitter by using a little control board I ordered. So we'll put that together, get it working, put it out in the field, and then this will let us test all of this equipment, antenna and attenuator and everything we've been building. See you in the next video.